we're following up studying Jesus as a little boy. You may remember in our last session, we studied, we read Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52, where Jesus had gone to the temple with his mother and father, and then they left and uh, went back. Mom was uh, either up front or in the back, and Dad was the, the other direction, and Joseph and Mary thought that Jesus was with the other parent. And turns out at the end of the day, Jesus wasn't there. And they make the long trip back to Jerusalem just to discover that Jesus was still at the temple. And he had said to them, why are you surprised that this is where I am? Why have you frantically been looking for me? There are some things that are revealed to us about Joseph and Mary, and about Jesus, and about the priorities of life through reading this story. Uh, our last session set this up, so I want to follow up on it now. There are some things that were revealed here about Jesus' parents, Joseph and Mary. What a serious responsibility to be the earthly parents of Jesus Christ growing up. Can you imagine? Parenthood is serious anyway, raising children. But to be given the responsibility to raise Jesus, wow, what, a, what an awesome burden and privilege. The text that we read in Luke 2, 41 through 52, shows us that Mary is still a woman, still a person, still a human. There's a lot about her humanity here. Because she got a little aggravated at Jesus for not being with them. Uh, that ought to be admired. Because God chose Mary and Joseph to be the parents of Jesus. And they felt responsible for her. Jesus really gives a compliment to his mom and dad when he said to them, Didn't you know where I'd be? Uh, because he basically is saying, Isn't this how you raise me? Didn't you expect that I would have this desire in me because you helped put this desire in me and it's just coming to fruition. Uh, he was saying, you, mom and dad, have taught me all my life. Didn't you expect me to be here? Why should you look anywhere else? I think when you read that and read this story, it is a great example for every mother and father as a Christian who's trying to raise their children. One of the things you'll learn is that Joseph and Mary were very faithful to raise Jesus according to the Old Testament scriptures, which is the Bible that they had. And they followed it and did what it said. Deuteronomy chapter 6 is an important passage in the Old Testament for the Jewish people. It says that you should teach your children to love the Lord their God with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their might. It says that parents were to make literally leather wristbands that they could put around their children's hand with scripture verses on them so that the children would grow up knowing God's word. Also, the parents would put on the door of their house scripture verses so that when the kids went in and went out, they would read these scripture verses. Uh, even to this day, a devout Orthodox Jew. Every time he goes in his house or out the door, he's reminded to love the Lord his God with all of his heart. So here you have in Mary and Joseph a mother and father who are faithful to obey what the Bible says when it comes to raising their children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. They refuse to take shortcuts in raising their children. These are admirable qualities in Joseph and Mary. One of the things that they were taught is three times a year, a Jew was required to come to Jerusalem for feast. That is, if you lived within 25 miles of Jerusalem. Now, Mary and Joseph lived far beyond that 25-mile boundary, but they went the extra miles, if you would, and came to Jerusalem anyway because they wanted their son to be there and to experience this spiritual moment in his life. This is a good lesson to learn. Literally, the Greek language says, and they came side by side. Joseph, Mary, Jesus, they came side by side. This is a good lesson for parents to learn. I often see parents drive their kids up to church, drop them off and say, I'll pick you up at noon. Not this mother and father. 
here this couple chose to raise their son in God's house side by side. They were setting a pattern of faithfulness to God that their son could watch. They were teaching their son what is important in life. It was important to know God's word. That's why Jesus said to them, Why are you surprised? When you've looked all over the city to find me, you should have known where to come. I was going to be in my father's house. You taught me this. You instilled this in my life. This would be where I would want to be. A Hebrew boy, when he learned to read and write growing up, used the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, as his textbook, his grammar book. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing that uh, you learn to read and write in the first grade by using the Bible? I have a friend who uh, works in China, and he teaches people English as a second language. And because we can't be missionaries there, he goes as an English second language teacher. But he is allowed to use the Bible as his English book to teach people English. Uh, for the first 10 years of Jesus' life, the book that he learned were the books of the Old Testament. Uh, so he's saying to his mom and dad, you shouldn't be surprised that I'm here at the temple. You put this into my heart. You put a desire in me to be in God's house. It's made me stop and ask a question. Think about this. Do people know where to look for you on Sunday? Uh, most days when I walk into my house or I check my cell phone, there's always a message on there. Somebody has left me a message. Uh, yet, there's never a message on my phone on Sunday mornings when I get home from church because everybody that knows me knows there's no need to call me during those hours on Sunday morning because they know I'm going to be in church. So nobody calls my house during that time because they know I'm not there. Do people know where you're going to be on a Sunday morning? Every once in a while I hear this crazy philosophy of some parent that says, well, I'm not going to make my kids go to church. I, I can't believe people say that. I really can't. That uh, An old-time preacher said, would say, that's a lie the devil's feeding you. Uh, we make our children do what we believe is essential for them to do. The same mother and father that says, I'm not going to make my children go to church, will make them get up every morning five days a week and go to school. Because they believe school and education is important for them. So if you make them go to school but don't make them go to church, what are you telling them is the most important? Education or learning about God? You see, uh, we teach our kids to do what we believe are important. We will send our kids to school regardless because we know getting an education is essential. When our kids become teenagers and take a job, you teach them to take on responsibility. And you teach them to go to work, whether they feel like it or not, because you want to instill discipline in them. Why is it that we'll make our kids go to school and we'll make our kids show up for work, but we don't make them do what's the most important and crucial thing in all the world? Being God's house just doesn't make sense. It reveals more about us than it does about them. Joseph and Mary put it in Jesus' heart to go to the house of worship. When they left, he wanted to stay. We have a program in our church that the children absolutely love. And I've had many of our parents tell me, I had to come this morning because my kids said I can't miss the day. They'd call their teacher's name and say, they're going to be waiting on me. And today I've got to share this memory verse. And they've, I've just got to come to church. That's great parenting. When we put it in our kid's heart to want to be at church. Uh, when I was little, I was in church so much, I think I began to look like some of the pews. Uh, I enjoyed church. Even when I wasn't living for the Lord, I wanted to go. It was a part of my life. 
I don't remember ever a time in my entire life asking my mother and father, am I going to go to church on Sunday? That would have been asking like, are we going to breed today? Are we going to eat today? Uh, that would have been a stupid question. We went. My mom and dad took the responsibility of parenthood uh, seriously. And they raised me in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And we went to church side by side. I'm excited to be a part of a church where God is blessing. We have some wonderful possibilities. Every week we see God doing something exciting. We have parents in our church, and all of us as parents have a responsibility. It's not just good enough to tell our kids what to do. We need to show them what to do. Uh, our children see more than they hear. In other words, they watch what we do, not just what we say. Joseph and Mary went side by side with Jesus to the temple. This is something I would say to our students who are listening. Take, assume, and know the responsibility that God has given you, even with the small children in your home, to raise them in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. We need to take our responsibility as parents seriously to teach our children the truths of God's word. We'll continue and see what we learn in the story about Jesus himself in our next session.